Welcome to Die Trying. You looking at me? No, sir. What Just you doing? Checking. Hey, so there's this <laughs> loud noises thing going around the office where everybody's been building standing desk. Um, Lifehacker did a big thing on it, built a $25 standing desk, which I think came from imnotaprogrammer.com, and it is essentially... You take an Ikea desk, you assemble it, and put it on your existing desk, basically. Sort of an Ikea end table. End table, And sorry. you bolt a shelf to the end table. So what we're gonna do today, hopefully, if everything works out, is we are going to use a welder. That's what I'm excited about. I have never welded before, but you have, and you're gonna teach me. This is gonna be exciting, and we're gonna take some one inch steel, which actually, I learned about one inch steel being the coolest thing on the planet from Jamie Heineman. A shout out to Tested.com, our buddy Will over there, who did a video with Jamie about welding in Jamie's workshop. And apparently all those shelves you see in the back of the Mistbusters are one inch steel. And he loves one inch steel because you get lots and lots of contact area. It's a big long line that you can just put a bead of molten metal on. Exactly, without having to spend a lot of quality time doing miter cuts and getting sophisticated and Steel is durable, it lasts a really long time, and if you buy it from a metal supplier like we did, we found a place called Bay Steel here in San Francisco, um, where we bought a 20-foot stick of one-inch steel for $15.92. Compared with like 22 bucks for six feet at like Lowe's. Yeah, so you know, beware, this, this project becomes a lot more affordable if you have a friend with a welder mm -hmm. who's willing to, to help you out with that and if you buy your materials from a supplier rather than from a big box store. Let's start welding. All right, actually we need to start cutting first. Okay, fine. First we cut, then we lay it out, then we start welding. All right, let's get cutting then. All right. <laughs> So one thing you'll notice is the blade has created these edges that stick out over here. As the steel melts, it kind of gets swept along by the blade, and you get this stuff in here and out here. It will cut the hell out of you, as our shooter Matt can explain. Uh, so you we'll be grinding the, that down. Yeah, we're gonna take the grinder to grind that down. A hand file will work just fine. But we do have a nice square edge. We're gonna use that to create our first piece of steel at three feet. Drawing on decades of experience in the furniture industry, I decided to make an H. <laughs> with two vertical uprights. All right, so we have all of our metal pieces cut and ready to go, so I guess we weld now? Yeah, so welding is essentially coalescing, which is uh, creating, turning the materials into a liquid and bringing them together, mm. right? Soldering or brazing. Well, okay, so we solder all the time on the show. Soldering is essentially used joining two materials together with a third material that melts at a lower temperature. In this case, we are going to use the miracle of the metal inert gas, the, the M-jaw, the MIG welder. MIG. MIG. There's MIG welding, TIG welding, stick welding, and essentially what this gadget does is cranks out wire. Ooh. It's exciting, isn't it? And there's a, sound familiar? Sounds like a relay to me. That's a big old relay. When I hit the switch, it turns on the electricity and feeds the wire. The electricity creates a plasma arc from our ground. We connect that to the metal in the middle. So we have our ground. By the way, a clean welding table is a really good idea. Um, goes from our ground to our gun, creates plasma, and we feed wire into that plasma, and we essentially have a hot glue gun that spits metal. And big sparks. And big sparks. <laughs> Not big sparks. For a beginner, what's the basic thing that you want to look for? So when you're looking, you know, you've got your, your, your welding, you know, you flip your welding hood down, you pull the trigger, and the whole world looks really, really different. You should be concentrating on the end of your gun, and what you're doing is creating a puddle. Start with a thicker piece of material, uh, or the lower piece of material, and, you know, if you're doing a fillet weld where, where you know, two pieces come together at a 90 degree angle, you need to melt both pieces, you create a puddle, that puddle gets filled in with additional, um, uh, wire from the MIG gun and you work that weld down the length of the leg. So we got our base done, then we went to our vertical right. bars and we drilled some holes and attached nuts in so that we could have our adjustable, uh, our infinitely adjustable stand. Then we had to mount the legs on the base. And that's one of those cases where like, you know, Feel free to like grab a vise or use a bunch of non-flammable things to brace your project. We had those those square pieces, you know, and we tacked, we got everything adjusted with a machinist square to 90 degrees, and then we tacked one side and then adjusted it so it was vertical again and tacked the other side so everything was square. Uh, and then we stopped 
um, and went to the upper piece, which is a U made out of the one inch tubing uh, that slides freely inside of that one and a quarter inch tubing. And the reason we, mount, we built the upper piece first was so that we could use the upper piece that has to slide up and down to keep our two legs vertical and aligned because it would be really awkward to not be able to move the legs because they bound or because the tubes weren't square to each other. One of the things I had to remind myself after I reminded Michael is to slow down, measure twice, cut once. Like make sure everything's aligned, make sure everything's welded, snug, um, and take your time on the welds. Because, um, you know, especially I was relearning how to MIG weld, Mike was learning how to MIG weld. Um, you know, and that's a good time also to stop, take a break, go to audiblepodcast.com slash DIY. Sponsor segue. Yes. <laughs> Yes, this is a sponsor segue, but you know what? I like I like Audible's books. Um, there's a ton of stuff up there. If you're catching up with Game of Thrones, they have the whole series, uh, and I'm actually pretty excited. I'm getting my kids involved with Sherlock Holmes on the next family road trip. Anyway, it's good stuff. They're a sponsor. We love them. Audiblepodcast.com slash DIY. Get yourself a free audio book. So once we finish that upper U, um, we dropped that into each of the two legs and then mounted the two legs on our H base and started welding. And then once that was done, we attached some horizontal pieces to act as our tabletop holders. Well, <laughs> first we like jumped up and down on it. You did pull-ups on it. I held my weight on it, so we decided it wasn't gonna fall over. Uh, then I realized we wanted to recycle that piece of granite, so we grabbed the last two 12-inch pieces of that one and a quarter inch tubing and mounted them on our C shape, our, our upper piece. Um, so we could mount our crazy ass 80 pound piece of granite on this without it falling off and crushing our toes. Here's our table, look. Laptop. <laughs> and it's adjustable so we can actually drop it a few inches so it, it fits under Michael's elbow. It's about an inch too high for me right now. Um, and that's kind of funny. I w we did 36 inch verticals for uh, the legs. I would cut four inches off of those and then this would fit anybody from like four foot 11 up to about six foot five. And we um, should talk about our tabletop. Right now we found in the hallway a giant piece of granite which we thought would be cool to just place on top. Reduce, reuse, recycle. So this would probably need to be epoxied in or something. Yes. Uh, yeah, some sort of liquid nails or commercial epoxy. Normally, you know, you would have a couple of, we've got some holes drilled in our T-braces at the top of our C-stand, and you, if it was wood, you would just screw into the bottom That's of the wood there. probably what we're gonna end up doing. Do you wanna have the sophisticated, sort of deconstructed granite thing? I just don't want this to fall on my feet. Dude, you know, if you were horrified by our welding technique uh, and safety, you should be. Comment down below uh, if you're on youtube.com slash DIY, where you can subscribe. Um, excuse me, youtube.com slash DIY Tryin, where you can subscribe. But something, I mean, something I should point out, right? These are not proper welding gloves, and I love mechanics gloves, um, but I finally managed to, there it is, uh, land a piece of molten steel on the nylon in between the fingers, which now is a part of my body, at least until I scrape it out later on. Wear proper safety gear. Now, obviously, we were wearing, you know, welding hoods with the appropriate glass inside of them. I forgot how much I really like self-darkening welding helmets. Yeah, because then you can see what you're welding before you start welding. Well, you can see what you're welding before you start <laughs> welding. You just have to nod the helmet down, which Too is... Much work. <laughs> but yeah, I will say uh, self-darkening helmets are fantastic. Um, I had to work a lot to kind of figure out First I was jamming the gun in too close and I pulled the gun out about a quarter inch, half, about a half inch and that sort of seemed to work and my welds started to look like welds and not snot welds. It seems like a very much a, a practice makes perfect sort of thing. Yes, and a good way to practice before you start on a project like this is just cut a bunch of four inch pieces and like build little cubes out of them or build you know, a little structure where it's like, you know, you build an eye, then you put another piece and another eye, and then cut them apart and weld them together again. And Practice. then sell them on the street as art, and you make money for welding. That's the spirit. <laughs> Die trying, people. At Die Trying is where you can tweet, at Palm Daly and at Patrick Norton. Uh, Die Trying at revision2.com if you want to send us an email and tell us uh, about a project that you're working on. We'd love to hear about your projects or projects you'd like to see us build. You excited? You're a welder, man. I'm a welder. You're a welder. Hey, what are you gonna weld next? Cubes. Cubes. I'm Patrick Norton. I'm Michael Hand. We'll see you next week on Die Trying. Later.
Welcome to Die Trying. You looking at me? No, sir. What you Just doing? Checking. Hey, so there's this <laughs> loud noises thing going around the office where everybody's been building standing desk. Um, Lifehacker did a big thing on it, build a $25 standing desk, which I think came from imnotaprogrammer.com, and it is essentially... You take an Ikea desk, you assemble it, and put it on your existing desk. Basically. Sort of an Ikea end table. End table, And Sorry. you bolt a shelf to the end table. So what we're gonna do today, hopefully, if everything works out, is we are going to use a welder. That's what I'm excited about. I have never welded before, but you have, and you're gonna teach me. This is gonna be exciting. And we're gonna take some one inch steel, which actually, I learned about one inch steel being the coolest thing on the planet from Jamie Heineman. Shout out to Tested.com, our buddy Will over there, who did a video with Jamie about welding in Jamie's workshop. And apparently all those shelves you see in the back of the Mistbusters are one inch steel. And he loves one inch steel because you get 